Hello everybody, and uh, welcome back. So, we have a new vehicle. As you can see, this definitely isn't a Mitsubishi Lancer. Uh, the Lancer is gone. Um, it seems to be a common theme right now with me, is uh, going through cars. I don't normally do this, but uh, the Lancer went to a very, very good home. Um, a friend of mine who's in the military who got posted and he needed a vehicle quick and he liked my Evo um, and asked if he could buy it so it meant I could get into a car that I fancied for a while I've never had one before um, and yeah here we go so let me tell you about this car this is a 2003 uh, Nissan 350Z um, I've already, as you can see, started doing modifications. I'm sorry guys, I've just been so busy. I've just not had an opportunity to go and video each stage like I would normally. Um, it's, it's been very, very busy for me and my family recently. So, uh, it's not been an opportunity to get this done. Uh, I did make a video the other day. <laughs> um, and in the transfer to the computer, uh, what actually happened was it corrupted uh, my entire DCIM folder. Uh, I lost thousands of pictures. Um, tried to recover it as best I could, but I couldn't. Anyway, enough talking about recovering pictures. That headache is done. Um, so here's the video that I wanted to give you. So this is my 03 Nissan 350Z. It is an enthusiast edition. Um, I got it in Boston. It's definitely not in the best of condition. Um, I've had to do a lot to make it look like it does here. So down here, these are the stock wheels that it came with. Um, this kind of was the start really. The wheels are curb rashed. Uh, they're straight, they hold pressure. Um, but the guy that had it before me very clearly was car poor. Um, there was absolutely zero maintenance ever done on this car. Uh, there's 84,000 on the clock, and I'm almost positive there was never no maintenance done on it. So, the telltale sign that somebody's owning a car on a shoestring budget is this for me. So, here are the stock rims. Um, there was a couple of reasons why I decided to change the rims out. First of all, obviously, cosmetics. The T37 19-inch reps look amazing. Um, I love the stretch tire look. Not massively overstretched it is quite stretched but it's not ridiculous it can go one worse than that uh they are ten and a half on the rear uh, with a two three five thirty five nineteen tire on it um i've got absolutely no uh spacers or anything like that uh this is the stock uh hub assembly setup uh the only thing that i have done is um i needed to replace all the wheel bearings and the rear hubs and studs and everything else uh, because they were absolutely mashed. Uh, both rear hubs were destroyed. In fact, actually, there was only four lug nuts holding the wheels on on the rear. Uh, one had snapped clean off, and the other one was cross-threaded in at such an angle that it was a struggle to get the nut out. Uh, other than that, there was also uh, three different sets of wheel studs actually holding those wheels on the car. There wasn't It was between 19 and 21 mil different sockets, different styles of nuts, uh, whatever they could scrape up to actually get it to uh, bolt to the car, that's what they'd done. Again, another telltale sign that this was maintained on zero budget. So anyway, so this is what I wanted to show you. Uh, first of all, that was one of the reasons, was the cosmetic reasons was for changing the wheels out. Uh, these, as you can see, are pretty, pretty gnarly. Um, one of the TPMS sensors on the front left side was failed. Um, they're quite expensive. Um, so that was another reason. Uh, but here we go. This is what I wanted to show you. Look, that's one tire, two tires, three tires, and four tires. There is not a single tire there that is actually the same brand or the same tread type. It is uh, whatever tire was the cheapest available uh, in stock at the time that was the absolute cheapest is the one that went on that car. Um, it's not good practice really to mix and match tyres. Uh, it can put strain on drivetrains. Uh, if one grips more than the other it's going to twist, right? It's going to cause all kinds of different grip potential differences on each corner. So um, it's going to definitely affect the ride of the car. So 
Um, not good practices. At the worst case, you should put them in pairs. Best case scenario is having them all the same all the way around, of course. Um, but uh, clearly that was a, a budget constraint right there. So, issues with the car. I got down there and apparently the only thing that was wrong with it, it had had a bit of a scrape. The car had been reversed with the door open on the other side and it had scraped down the door uh, and affected a few things there like alignment and, and damage to the door. So, I knew about that. I knew that the air conditioning didn't work uh, and several other little things. Uh, the windscreen washer tank had cracked so there was a new tank, there was a new wheel arch liner for that. Um, and a new tank with new pumps. Um, but other than that, I thought the car was in pretty good shape. There was a tear to the leather. Uh, all the wheel bearings and studs and everything else needed replacing. Uh, TPMS sensor failed. There's a crack in the exhaust. Um, there was only a litre of oil in the engine. Um, where else can I go from here? The air conditioning, the windscreen washer tanks. The whole bodywork had scratches all over it. Like, it had... Lots of little things going on on every single panel, uh, but the worst was around the other side. So if I walk around, and I'll show you. As you can see, there's vinyl everywhere. So there you go, there's a pile of uh, body filler. And it's still not perfect, um, but I've, I've tried as best I can for what it is. I mean, ideally, I need a new door. No doubt about it, that needs a new door. Um, I can't get it any straighter than that because of the way that the metal's bent. Um, but the uh, good thing about vinyl is that it hides pretty much everything. So, um, to talk about vinyl... Whoa, shaky. Sorry, guys. Um, talk about vinyl. Um, this is a brand spanking new vinyl just come out. This is uh, Frost Chrome. So it's an orange Frost Chrome. So it's actually a chrome metallic finish, as you can see, but it's actually a satin finish as opposed to like the gloss mirror look. Um, just as a comparison here, look, so you can sort of see the satin finish. If I come over, I've actually got... Here we go. That... That is the orange chrome mirror vinyl. Um, I didn't want to go with that. I thought this looks much, much better. Um, Definitely gives lots and lots of dimension to the actual body shape of the car. It affects everything. It, it just looks absolutely awesome. So, the whole car's been wrapped in this. Um, I've fixed just so many little things already. Um, the windscreen washer jet on the um, windscreen wiper arm on the driver's side, that was detached. I've fixed that now. I've put the new tank in, new wheel arch liner in. Um, straightened everything up a bit. Uh, done some body work there, the vinyl wrap, wheel bearings, e-brake pads, uh, what else, what else, what else, inner tie rods, uh, lower ball joint on the driver's side, uh, sway bar links, uh, it needed all new belts, um, I flushed the engine oil and put um, royal purple in there now, synthetic, the transmission fluid now has been replaced with Royal Purple 75W90. I have uh, Royal Purple gear oil in the rear diff. Um, what else have I done? It, it just, oh my goodness, I don't even know. Uh, I've put a carbon fiber race intake system in there that's a closed air intake, ram air intake system. Uh, all new uh, Bosch uh, Iridium spark plugs in there that are like a uh, better fit than what's uh, already in their stock. Um, plastic dip the front lip. That was actually body coloured. Um, but again, the roads in Nova Scotia, unfortunately, destroy low cars and splitters. So the way I see it is if I vinyl that, it's only going to get damaged in literally a month. At least with plastic dip, when it does get damaged, and it will, you can just peel it off and then reshoot it, put it back on again, and it looks like brand new. And you, I don't mind doing that every six months, but the vinyl's going to start getting really, really expensive every six months. So, there you go. So that's the car itself. As you can see, the vinyl came out absolutely incredible. It's so beautiful, honestly. It's, I, I wrapped uh, another car in this vinyl, and it 
I, I was almost immediately sold. I had to have it on my own car. It looks absolutely beautiful. Yeah, my mate's car came out just as good as this. So there you go. So that's uh, that's the car as it stands right now. I don't know if I can get any further back to give you a sort of full shot. There you go. Look, beautiful, beautiful car. It sounds amazing. Uh, I will say this: the engine itself is actually in very good condition. Uh, runs great. Uh, have a look at the interior here. It is the manual transmission 6 p Like I said, it is the Enthusiast, so I do get the limited slip diff uh, and the VDC control um, and leather. Although, like I said, the leather isn't in the best of conditions. I mean, it's all cracked there. And then as you can see, there's a great big crack in the passenger seat. Um, I'm probably going to end up re-trimming them. For all of those that don't know, there's a company called um, Catskins who build custom interiors online and their interiors are second to none they're absolutely fantastic you can pick your stitching your leather perforations absolutely everything uh, and within 24 hours they'll have it mailed out to you it's quite incredible and i've yet to work with cat skins and not had a good fit their incredible um workmanship is is brilliant it's absolutely brilliant to install really easy they don't make it much easier so Modifications, I guess we should talk about, seeing as you know, that's what I do. Um, so we've got the vinyl, we've got the wheels, we've got the lug nuts on there, I guess, uh, for modifications. We've got the intake system in there. Um, I'm going to show you that later, guys. I don't want to have to open it all up now, but um, I'm going to do more in there uh, before um, I start sort of lifting the hood, because uh, it isn't much to look at, to be honest with you. Um, so modifications, yep. So next... I have arriving today a true dual exhaust system. Now it is resonated, it's not one of these nasty ones where it's raspy as all hell and gargling away on every cylinder, it's um, just a really nice sound to it. So I'll make you a nice before and after video uh, of the sound there. Um, one of the snags that I'm carrying right now that's driving me absolutely crazy is the Bose system, the stereo in there right now. When you brake, the whole left side of the stereo completely cuts out. And then as soon as you accelerate again, it kicks back in again. So what I'm assuming is that that has had an aftermarket stereo in there. I'm almost positive it has, uh, because that is the common denominator to what's going on, because it is the whole left side of the car that is cutting out. Um, so what I'm thinking is that it's had an aftermarket stereo in there, and they've probably reconnected the factory Bose deck uh, using twist tape, spit hopes and dreams and everything else to hold it together um, which isn't working very well if even they've done that much i've seen so many unbelievably unacceptable electrics on cars recently i i don't know what to expect um, i've seen professional shops twisting wires and not even insulating them and just shoving decks in i had one car uh, a civic sir which was a fantastic car by the way um where the stereo just randomly would just cut out and the screen would retract and then it would kick back in again and I actually slid the deck out um, and it was literally just a pile of wire twisted together and apparently that was installed by a professional shop uh, here locally and I won't say who it is. So there you go. Um, onwards and upwards I guess. Plans, like I said, the exhaust um, is the next thing for it. Then, I don't know what... Um, I've been doing a lot of a lot a lot of research on forced induction on these things and I would love to make this thing boosted. I would and I would love to make it turbo. Um but everything I've read so far online in regards to these cars and boost suggests there's always going to be fitment issues. It doesn't seem to matter what kit you get. Some are considerably better than others, but there is always a certain amount of fabrication and imagination required. Um, what else? These engines, they seem to pop in quite a spectacular way with boost. Um, I've seen gaping holes in the bottom end of engines. And I mean gaping, like whole chunks, huge chunks of metal missing. Um, 
and I don't want to be in that situation because like I said the engine runs strong it runs really really nice although compared to the Evo this thing feels as slow as hell um, it does run smooth and strong so I don't really want to pop a, a decent engine so my thinking is if I'm gonna do this if I'm gonna keep this car which at the moment is always a possibility that it can sell um, if I do end up keeping this car, let's let's say this, if I end up keeping it for six months as it is, there's a probability that I'll probably keep it for a good while, and if that's the case, then I will, for sure, um, end up doing a bit more to it. But I think, ultimately, what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to build the engine. I'll probably put some nice uh, marl or something like that, low compression pistons in there. Uh, and and really build it solidly so that it can handle boost correctly. Um, ECUs I've started looking into. It seems that there's a possibility of sort of two or three choices. There's the HKS Fcon, there's Pe Pexi Power FCs. Um, there's a couple of sort of independent ones like uh, RevUp and Haltech and a few others as well that uh, work um, and have options built in for boost. Uh, and boost control so that's alone is gonna cost you know one and a half thousand dollars before we even get into tuning the thing um, on top of a turbo kit on top of everything else that goes along with it including the bottom end you know you can pay several thousand maybe five six thousand dollars for a turbo kit uh, with maybe a 7 psi external wastegate um, but then you'll pay equally as much to make the engine compatible with that boost application so and then of course it's all about the quality of the install uh, and how well you install it so that would that would be a good project for a winter i think you know you need a sort of three or four month window where you can pick at it and not rush and if you need to get things machined or made up then you can do that um to make a good fit but anyway guys um so here she is this is the new hold on let me get this right the new 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 toy um and you're going to be seeing a lot more of this one i think um i'm very very much taken by this car not for the performance just because she is so beautiful what a wonderful looking car and she does drive pretty good too but anyway guys as always like i said post your comments feel free uh, ask any questions I know, I know I'm going to get so much flack for having another car. I know I am. And you know what? I know, I know. It's ridiculous how fast I go through these cars. Uh, it absolutely is. But I promise you that uh, this will be the last for a little while. Um, purely because I don't think my funds can stretch anymore to do any more of this ridiculousness. Car swapping and, and then remodifying and then just when I get it how I want it. Um, actually... Uh, selling the car so um this one i've invested a lot already um too much to now sell it because um i've got far too much into it to now make it worth it for what i've paid for the car and what it's actually worth um i'm i'm so deep in now that i couldn't couldn't actually sell it because i'd just lose so much money it's not even worth it i may as well just keep it and enjoy it but yep i'll talk to you later guys i'll hopefully have another video soon uh and you'll see the next progression i'm going to show you this exhaust video but uh, take care have a good day and thanks for watching see you later guys